Hello and welcome on Weekend Sport on Trust TV. Um, Adeni uh, G. Shafe will be taking you around the world of sport. It's always a juicy one, even though we know that football is on break right now. Still, some clubs are fighting hard to play pre season, while some are actually competing in Nigeria Super 8 over there in Lagos. More of this will be coming on the show. But first of all, we take you what happened during the week. Just uh, two stories we have for you about uh, the review of the week, where we talk about 2023 Global Jam Basketball Select for Nigerian players. For Nigerian players will be participating in this competition that will be coming up in Canada. Well, the good thing right now is the fact that this competition involves four, five Nigerians, four male and one female that will be joining them. It's a five-on-five -five basketball competition where Nigeria, uh, five Nigerians have been selected right now. Let's look at the list of those five Nigerians uh, beers that have been selected. We have Emmanuel Okrua for Opli for Kwara Falcon. We have Nelly Joseph uh, Kwara Falcon. Also, Victor Eze, why Abimbola Adewumi joins uh, that particular team from Maryland University, USA. Good one for Abimbola Adeomi. She's the only female there. And now they'll be playing that competition that'll be coming up in Canada. Hopefully, they will do us proud in that global jam basketball where the NBA doing uh, the mini fee to get Nigerians into this competition. Well, that actually happened during the week. And we also look at CAF. Uh, CAF talking about the preliminary stage of the competition. The second preliminary round of Champions League, they will no longer allow clubs that drop uh, to play uh, in CAF uh, Confederation, uh, rather from Champions League to CAF Confederation because they are clearly scrapped that uh, from happening. Uh, CAF are try, try to see how they can change the rules of CAF Champions League. Well, we know that most of the time, most of these clubs, uh, when they play in CAF second round Champions League competition, they drop to CAF uh, Confederation. Just the way it happens in UEFA Champions League, Morihu also uh, retreated the, the fact that he doesn't like the fact most clubs when they drop from CAF, uh, rather UEFA Champions League, they drop to yeah, Europa Cup. But right now, that should stop at last CAF. I was actually try to see how they can change that in our own football style here in Africa. They won't be allowing any club that drop to drop into from CAF Championship to CAF uh, uh, Confederation Cup. There were well, from the way it is right now, most clubs will not be happy with this because there is still hope for them. Even if they drop from the bigger boys, they will be dropping to the big boys CAF. Uh, Confederation. Well, from the way it is right now, that is over because uh, the rule has been changed by CAF. Uh, they want to make sure they sanitize African football, making sure everything gets better. If you are not there, you are not there. And if you get so CAF Confederation, you play in CAF Confederation or in Champions League. Good one there uh, coming from that particular story that we just gave to you there. Now we'll be having a guest from uh, Zambia, precisely from Lusaka, who will be joining us. Uh, well, uh, hopefully we'll be hoping to have uh, Tembo Mavuto join us from Lusaka concerning African football. Uh, that's a football academy business in Africa and also we talk about Zambian team there. Well, even though we are waiting for Tembo to join us, when it comes to uh, football business in Africa, we've seen so many academies I mean, uh, being built around different locations in Africa, different cities. You have football academy for male and female, where lots of young, talented footballers in Africa have been uh, in school, uh, put together by different clubs or academy just to get the best out of all these footballers. And we've also seen where scouts come across different locations in Africa, where some clubs, even in Europe, having an academy in Nigeria. Example like Roma, Real Madrid having an academy in Nigeria right now, where a lot of talented players have been together to have an academy but let's see that with uh, Tebo Mavuso who relates to that particular style of football business in Africa well we're waiting for uh, that particular uh, guest to join us while we're waiting for him to join us we quickly look at that segment where you think you know but really you may not know and if you know you just have to remind yourself about this let's go to that segment of did you know
not so factitious there. Did you know? Well, that segment is always very educative because it's just uh, be thinking you know a lot of things about sport. Really, you may just not know. And now, if you know, you're being reminded there. We just uh, rolled that segment. Did you know out for you there? Now, let's uh, keep on on the show as we talk about different stories uh, trending in the world of sport. In 2022, Nigerian contingent traveled to uh, Commonwealth Games in Birmingham City and we were able to win the 4 by 100 meter uh, relay for women in gold. Well, right now, we've been stripped of that particular goal because of the fact that one of our athletes, uh, Grace Woko, had tested positive to ban substance and right now, Nigeria has been stripped of that gold medal uh, that we won over there at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham City for that particular uh, airing coming from Woko, uh, Grace there. Well, from the way it is, Right now, the likes of Toby Admission, Favor of Philly, and Rosemary Chukuma will have to drop everything attached to that particular gold medal that we won. And also for Grayson World Culture, every participation in the competition at the uh, Commonwealth Games by her right now has also been stripped by what Atleti for the fact that she was found wanting. So painful because uh, Nigeria raised uh, the race of their life in that encounter ahead of the likes of England to come first in that competition. Four by 100 meter women relay. And now we have to stop, uh, actually succumb that particular gold medal so painful uh, due to the fact that she was found wanting for ban substance there. England will take over as uh, gold medalist after coming second behind Nigeria in that race over there at the Commonwealth Games. Well, we just saw the Nigerian Atlas. We do everything possible to always follow all the rules and regulations that come from WADA, what an uh, anti-drug agency there. Well, from the way it is, it's so painful we are out from that gold medal there. Now, we talk about another story trending over there in Lagos. Two clubs right now, they've qualified for the final of this year, Niger Super 8. We have Sporting Lagos. Sporting Lagos have really surprised everyone this season, qualifying for the Nigerian Premier League that will be coming up next season, and also getting to the final of the Super 8, where big clubs like Eyimba, Rivers United have been dumped out of this competition now is the battle between Remo Stars and Sporting Lagos as both of them qualify for the final. Sporting Lagos said we're able to edge uh, Lobby Stars and now Quiet United talking about Remo Stars and Sporting Lagos and now both teams will be fighting hard to see who will win the 25 million Naira jackpot on ground for this particular uh, competition. Naija Super 8 has been on and now we have the champion, uh, rather the finalists that will be vying for the champion in that competition there. Well, Sporting Lagos really have really shocked the whole Nigeria for the fact that they've performed excellently well in all competitions this season and now they are in the MPL. Well, Remo Stars, they qualify for CAF Champions League and also they're still in the MPL race for next season. We wait to see who wins that particular big one that will be coming about the Mobilaji Johnson Arena in Lagos. Well, from there we talk about the fact that uh, uh, this particular story, well, for next season MPL champion will get going home with 150 million naira according to the sponsors 2023-2024 nigerian premier league champion to earn 150 million prize money for this uh, uh, season it went to aimba international and they were able, able to win that uh, competition there with 100 million so next season the winner of nigerian football league we go home with 150 million a good one there and they are trying to see how all the teams will also get uh, 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 some phone to support them if you remember the abridged league uh, that we saw the image that saw the emergence of Aimba actually got each club uh, being given 20 million euro each uh, to as a supporting fund for all the clubs right now the sponsors are saying for next season they've earmarked five billion naira for Nigerian Premier League and the winner will be going home with about 150 million well talk about a jackpot there for Nigerian uh, teams Nigerian football is getting better we want to see more of this and also see how the league will come back to limelight. We always, it's always very good to talk about our own and we we'll always continue to push for the promotion of Nigerian sport out there. Well, we go on a short break. The Super Falcons are in the World Cup already, really preparing ahead of the World Cup. We'll be talking about their performance against Lions FC of uh, Australia. Before then, let's have a feel of their performance against Cote d'Ivoire when they were in Nigeria. And then after that, we'll come back to give you more in the world of sport.
Good morning. 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 Where well, they will be fighting her at the World Cup. The ladies are battle ready. Just earlier today, they play a game against uh, Queensland Lions FC uh, over there, where they were able to win 8 1. They won 8 1 in that encounter. Congrats to Super Falcons in a warm up game where Asisa Doshuala was able to score a brace. You have uh, Kanu scoring, Ajibade, uh, Payne, Onumanu, Alonso, Alimatua, and they all scoring. Not forgetting Monday Gift also adding to it with the, uh, in the goals. Uh, they score eight goals for Super Falcons in the French league game against Lion FC, they call them Queensland Lions FC. For Super Falcons, uh, they are ready to do well in this competition. Despite all the issues of that surrounding that team, right now the ladies are at, at least uh, weaving that off and they want to perform well at the World Cup. They'll be facing Canada, Australia and also Ireland in their group. And we just saw that they will do well at this Mundial. They've been talking to also performing well right now. Hopefully, the 8-1 they score will also at least push them to perform well against Canada, against Australia, and also Ireland. Now, let's look at their performance at the World Cup. All the World Cup they've been going since 1999. Uh, they've been, uh, rather, they've been going to the World Cup. Let's see the performance so far where they've been to. Sorry, 1991, I beg your pardon. Uh, in 1991, it was uh, a group stage where they played three matches. Uh, they actually lost all the three games and they conceded. Uh, well, uh, it was a tough one there. They actually considered seven goals uh, in that first edition of their uh, competition at the World Cup in 1991. In 1995, Super Falcons also went to the World Cup. Uh, they, they played three matches. They drew one, lost two, and they considered 14 goals, scoring five. Well, it was a better performance. Why in 1999, their best performance so far till date, uh, 1999, they actually played four games. Uh, they won two. They lost two and they scored eight goals and considered 12 uh, in that competition. It was far, by far their best performance at the competition in 1999. They were led by late Ismail Amabo and that particular competition was a, a, very, uh, a worthy one because till date, Nigeria is still celebrating them for what they've done. In 2003, it was at group stage that they were ousted, playing three matches, losing all the three matches, conceding 11 goals, no goals scored by Super Falcons in 2003. 2007, they got to the group stage, played three matches, they lost to one, one uh, drew one rather, and they scored one goal, conceding four. In 2011, at group stage, played three matches, drew one, lost two. They scored one goal, considered two. In 2015, they also got to the group stage where they actually played three matches, drew one, lost two, scored three goals and considered six there while in 2019 it was round of 16 they played four matches they won one they lost three scoring two goals and considering seven for 2023 right now the, the captain of that team Onomevi says they want to get to the semi-final uh, thereby at least they're beating the record set in 1999 uh, by the set of falcons there by getting to the semi-final this time around but well we wait to see is it just by mouth or by action they want to manage all with action we wait for super falcons to respond just showcasing to you their their performance at the world cup since 1991 so far, the best time was in 1999 when they go to the quarterfinals. And we hope that uh, this time around that they have said they will get to the semi-final, they will be able to do it in this competition. That's not been too good for Super Falcons at the world level, but in Africa, they've dominated the competition. But they, at the world level, they need to up their games and do well, especially for this 2023 uh, World Cup for women. Well, Super Falcons, we believe in you guys and uh, the ladies uh, for them to do well at uh, the competition. Well, from Super Falcon stories now, let's uh, talk about, let's go international and talk about uh, tennis. Uh, tennis, uh, a big one is coming up today and also on Sunday between four players, uh, two ladies and also two gentlemen. We look at the ladies first. Uh, Ons Jabo of Africa, because the name she, they call her right now because she represents Tunisia and the whole Africa is behind Ons Jabo to break the record, to become the first African. If she can't do it against uh, uh, the player she'll be facing, Marketa Vondrosa over there in Wimbledon, England, where they'll be fighting for the winner. Well, this lady did well last season. She got so last year rather. She got to the final before she was edged out. And this time around, she was able to get her own pound of flesh against Sabarina, Sabakina in that game. Now she'll be facing Vondrosa from uh, that Belarusian lady. A tough one there. Who will win this particular big one between Tunisian on Jabor 
against Maketa Vendrosa, Vendrosa, uh, Vendrosa in the final of Wimbledon women that will be coming up today. Now, the whole Africa has supported him on Jabor for the fact that she has been able to get to the final. This is the second time she's trying to get to the final and now we see how she can do it this time around. It is very possible that on Jabor will actually break the record this time around being the first African to do this and the whole Africa will be so proud of what she has done in the world of tennis. Let's talk about the man. Well, the man of the moment, Novak Djokovic is really trying to get to the four grand slam of his career thereby trying to see how he can overcome the nemesis from Carlos Alcaraz the Spaniard the young uh, Spaniard has really been turning the flesh for Novak Djokovic recently the 20 year old is really edging closer and closer to close the gap between himself and Novak Djokovic Novak Djokovic is 36 uh, Alcaraz is 20 and they'll be fighting hard to know the winner on Sunday while they face out in the Wimbledon final for men. A big one there between the two, really. They've been fighting hard, not quite long that they met, and now they are getting to the final of this one to see who, who, takes, the, who takes home this particular trophy between Djokovic and Carlos uh, Alcaraz. A big one between the two, although it's going to be a match that a lot of people want to see for the fact that Alcaraz seems to be taking over the reign of Rafael Nadal as a, Sp as a Spaniard. Will he be able to do it against Novak Djokovic just the way he was he turned in the flesh against Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer? Well, Carlos Alcaraz seems to be another new kid on the block who is really closing the gap against the big boys. He defeated Danny Medvedev in 6-3, 6-3, 6-3 in the game that actually saw him triumphing there. For Novak Djokovic, it was a smooth ride ahead of Yannick Sina, uh, where he was able to win qualifying for the final there. Well, that's, those are the uh, two games coming up in the men and also the women's final in Wimbledon. A big one there for all the whites, uh, the pepper storm that will be coming up on, uh, in England. Well, we leave uh, tennis now. Let's talk about football. Well, if you look at FIFA World Cup that happened in 2022 in Qatar, a lot of clubs actually allowed their players to participate. Yes, a lot of clubs, all these clubs that participated get some amount of money. They receive some amount of money from FIFA. And we look at that particular story. Manchester City, top list of FIFA payment to clubs for 32 national teams in Qatar 2022 World Cup. Well, all the clubs that participated actually got paid by FIFA and Manchester City. With, uh, they have much more players ahead of Bayern Munich, Barcelona to, to actually receive more money from uh, FIFA. Well, let's look at uh, that particular breakdown from FIFA, 2022 FIFA World Cup payments to club. 440 clubs in 51 countries were rewarded by FIFA. And you have $209 million fund allocated by the same FIFA. Clubs in UEFA member countries got $159 million. 76% of the total fund and clubs in England accounted for $37.7 .7 million. Manchester City, the team that actually got the biggest, got $4.6 million. Why 18 African clubs and $4.57 million. 27 Italian clubs it actually went up with 18.7. You got Spanish clubs, they collectively earned 24.2. German clubs share a little over $21 million. French clubs payout was 16.5. And you have Saudi Arabian clubs led the Asian list with $6.6 .6 million. Host nation, Qatar's club, the club from Qatar, they got 6.3. Why clubs in United States of America got $5.4 million. Just to give you a breakdown of how FIFA shared the money uh, that has to do with the, all the uh, 440 clubs that participate, that released their players for the World Cup. Now, let's look at the 18 African clubs that earn 5.47. Uh, you look at the breakdown from Egyptian football association, Egypt, uh, two clubs from Egypt, they actually are Lali and Zamalek. Uh, you see how much they earn. They are a big one for them. For, uh, 420 and also $229,000. You see why a lot of uh, clubs always uh, try to see how their players can make it to the World Cup. Cameroonian Football Federation, you look at three clubs getting paid there. Akpeje Dumofo there, Colombia Sportive and Cotton Sport, they all receive 73, 109, and 219,000 uh, dollars. 
Senegalese Football Federation, we are a particular uh, club. Uh, Generation Foot got twenty thousand dollars for releasing their player for the uh, that actually was able to make it to the World Cup there in the Senegalese uh, Terenga Lions uh, club team that made the World Cup. Tunisia Football Federation, about five clubs release their players there. You have Club African, Safian, Experience Tunis, you have a Toy du Sahel and US Minister. All any huge amount of money like experience, they got five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars after some of their players made it to the World Cup to represent Tunisia. Well, for Ghana. Well, the team that actually edged out Nigeria, they were trying to go for the World Cup. They got Asante Kotoko, Dreams FC, Hearts of Oak, King Faisal, Steadfast FC. They all got 109, 18,219. You have Asante Kotoko receiving $200,000. The total of the amount Ghana clubs received was $565,000 from FIFA. You see, imagine if Nigeria were to be at the World Cup, all these clubs would have made a lot of money and also our federation. Royal Moroccan Football Federation, Raja Club, that's Raja Casablanca. You have Raja Casablanca also, 31,000 and 1 million four hundred and five thousand dollars. Just to break it down for you to see how much the clubs that their players participated at the work of 440 clubs were at the Mundial to let their players play at the work of for different countries, and the amount they got is overwhelming. Well, for all the clubs that actually uh, uh, allowed their players to play at the World Cup, they got their own share from FIFA. And right now, a lot of them are smiling to the bank. That's why you see a lot of uh, countries trying to see how they can qualify for the World Cup. Now, another draw has been made for 2026 World Cup. And we'll be getting to that particular segment where we we'll talk about uh, Nigeria in that group C, where we have uh, other countries joining us. We'll be talking about that. But before then, let's just go on the short break. By the time we return, we'll go on that particular topic.
Nigeria so always uh, live to remember this particular day. Nigeria versus Ghana there. Well, World Cup qualifier a draw has been made and now we'll be looking at that sort of it together. Let's start with uh, uh, showcasing the World Cup. Well, right now, let's look at uh, 2026 FIFA World Cup groups that have been made. We have nine in all. In Group A, you have Egypt, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Syria, Leone, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. Group B, you have Senegal, DR Congo, Mauritania, Togo, Sudan, South Sudan. Down to Group C, we have Nigeria, South Africa, Benin. Republic, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, and Lesotho will be fighting out to see who qualifies there as uh, the uh, World Cup qualifying team there. Well, Group D, you have Cameroon, Kivad, Angola, Libya, Eswatini, Mauritius. In Group E, uh, Morocco, Zambia, Congo, Tanzania, Niger, Eritrea. You have Group F, Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast, Gabon, Kenya, the Gambia, Burundi, Seychelles there. You have uh, uh, Algeria, Guinea, Uganda, Mozambique, Botswana, Somalia, while they are in Group G. In Group H, Tunisia, Equatoria, Guinea, Namibia, Malawi, Liberia, Sao Tome, while in Group I, it's going to be a tough one between Mali, Ghana, Madagascar, uh, Central Africa Republic, Comoros, and Chad. They will all be vying for the World Cup 2026. Well, the top team there will qualify automatically. So making it nine teams that will make it while they have the playoff uh, before that will be done. But right now, we'll be focusing on our group. Group C, uh, Group C have Nigeria, South Africa, Benin, Republic, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, and Lesotho. And that's why we open our phone line for you to call us. And at least uh, a lot of people are saying oh, Nigeria will qualify. But uh, a lot of uh, football pundits are looking at, you have to be very careful. This is a banana peel. We have to be very careful of South Africa, the likes of Rwanda, uh, Benin Republic, where we have our former coach, uh, Coach Ganoro, is the coach of Benin Republic, is there. Uh, we have uh, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, and all that. And if you look into, to, uh, take into consideration the fact that South Africa, they are very close to Lesotho, Zimbabwe, and also not too far to Rwanda, compared to Nigeria, who will be having only been a republic so close. Traveling, logistics, and all that will be affecting them one way or the other. So right now is a big one. Uh, we just have to be very careful. Lots of football pundits are talking tough concerning this group, uh, that group C. You just have to call us and let's have your view. When you are calling, please stay away from your TV set. Uh, tell us your name and where you are calling from. Do you think Nigerian can we qualify from that group? Because right now, uh, anytime they made a draw, we are always so quick to say, oh, we are going to make it, looking at the name of the countries. And this time around, we have to be very careful. Just saw the, uh, the video or the clip between Nigeria and Ghana. They came to Abuja, saw and conquered against the Eagles. Now we are having South Africa, Bafana, Bafana. They are there. You have uh, the Scrolls of Benin Republic. You have the Rwanda. You have uh, Zimbabwe. Not forgetting, uh, uh, in fact, Lesotho. They are also in that particular uh, group, a big one. So let's run through this together. You're going to make it two in one. A particular player also uh, has been in issue that has to do with rape case for almost over two years. His name is Benjamin Mendy. Benjamin Mendy uh, right now, just yesterday, was cleared of all this issue that has to do with rape. And after two, almost two and a half years, he was taken to prison before he was released, and now he has been cleared of this rape case. What the, uh, the, has to do with his career right now? It's so painful because he was shedding tears when he was being asked by a journalist concerning how he felt, concerning that particular uh, judgment, and what will happen concerning his career. He was just shedding tears after that six count charge of rape. Well, uh, two in one, Colin, and let's have your uh, view concerning this, make your contribution. We have two in one uh, topics for you there. Can Nigeria qualify from Group C? Benjamin Mendy case also about the rape case. We have a caller joining us from where? Let's have you. Good to have you on the show. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Where are you calling from? Your name, please. I'm calling from My name is Gimba Matthew from Kaduna State. Okay, Gimba Matthew from Kaduna State is two in one. Can Nigeria qualify yeah. from Group C? No, actually, the Nigeria, if actually they are, they are qualified from that group, the group C. Because when you look at the setup, I'm afraid of just uh, the Republic. Bene, only the Republic. What about South Africa? The Republic and South Africa, actually, but the Nigeria is not uh, on direct the, the, the rest of the, the, the team because uh, the, the setup now is very dangerous because every country is trying to see that. 
to qualify to the World Cup. Mm. But Nigeria should take those matches very serious so that they will qualify. If not, uh, those countries that we are seeing that they are not in the surprise us. Mm. So, okay. especially the South Africa and, uh, and that Benin Republic. Oh, Benin Republic. So, since it is not one, uh, one country that will qualify for the game, so Nigeria should take it very seriously. They should not direct, they should not direct, uh, direct any country because the game now is not about uh, how a country is, but how the timing in that country is to play mm. in their own way of playing. Mm. So okay, now that, that, let so me you take you. We don't want to lose going to the World Cup in 2026. So okay. Nigeria should not give up our attention. They will very take every country very serious when they are taking the match. That's my take off. But Nigeria, I believe, will qualify. Okay, good one. And now let's talk about Benjamin Mendy. You, you heard about this uh, rape case, and now he has been at least acquitted of all the charges. Uh, but uh, why, why, no, no, why, are even, uh, why are even care about the Republic? Because you know the coach, that the coach that is there in the Republic has been in Nigeria, so he has known the taxes of Nigerians. Okay, so, it seems, uh, okay, Gimba, thank you. Hello, Gimba, can you hear me, please? Okay, thank you so yes. much. We're actually making it two in one. Uh, well, we're talking about Benjamin Mendy also. We are trying to infuse the two together. Uh, well, so painful that uh, that, tw that player, 24-year-old Benjamin Mendy also, uh, was accused of rape. And now he has been discharged and acquitted of all the rape cases after spending two and a half years uh, out of football. So painful. We'll be actually uh, adding that with the uh, Group C that has to do with Nigeria against South Africa, Benin Republic, and all of that. Just join us. Uh, called by telling us how you feel about this and uh, let's run the show together well uh according to gimba there nigeria will qualify despite the fact that he's a bit afraid of the republic and south africa but we can still make it uh, right now well from the way it is nigeria just has to be very careful you just have to be very very careful it's a banana peel group we have to be very careful of all this country well we have a call up there let's have your name and where you're calling from hello are you there yeah, I'm there. Okay, let's have your name and where you're calling from, please. Uh, my name is Mr. Ben Lekidabo. I'm calling you from Kano. Okay, Yusuf from Kano. Let's have you. It's two in one. Benjamin Mendes uh, <laughs> uh, being cleared of all the issues that has to do with rape case and also Nigeria Group C. Yeah, honestly, Nigeria should be very careful of South Africa. Mm. Because South Africa, considering their league is very short, and missing the two last two editions of the World Cup, so they will come all out against Nigeria. So we should be very careful with them, especially the people with their against us. They just want to cause, cause, cause harm to us. Even they didn't qualify, but they're not sure that we're talking and they're not qualifying. That's their aim. Mm. Allow South Africa to qualify. So we should be very careful and we optimistic that we will qualify by God gift. Yeah. Okay, what, what? the issue of uh, Mendy, mm. yeah, the problem is that almost eight out of ten cases were well, cases were red cases. You finally you found out the allegation. Mm. So what the consequences of the other side? If the person that achieved a breath found not guilty. Since the punishment will reduce all these allegations. Mm. For instance, maybe that game will reduce well, this case with his career. Honestly, now we don't know why he's up to. It's very painful because. So, uh, finally, I wish him when it's very token, painful and sad. We him yesterday, he didn't have his painful. Well, I wish you well, and I wish Nigeria well. The good news will qualify this time around. Inshallah. Okay, thank you so much, Yakubu from Kano. They are joining us uh, on the show, talking about uh, Mendy. Well, it's so painful that Mendy had to go through this. But now, what's next for his career? And also for Super Egos, he says we should be very careful of South Africa and Benin Republic. Banana peel there. We have to watch out. We can still join us on the show. We have uh, more minutes to go. Uh, well, at least uh, we can still take one or two calls before we wrap it up on the show concerning Nigeria in Group C. We have uh, Nigeria, South Africa, Rwanda, Lesotho, Zimbabwe, and a big one there. Well, a caller joining us on the show. Let's have you. Hello, hello, good to have you on the show. Can you please stay away from your TV set? Uh, okay, let's have you, please. Go ahead. 
Uh, okay, uh, well, we are still waiting for people to call in, but really, a, a painful one there for uh, Benjamin Mende. Uh, well, it was actually, has been cleared, it has been cleared of all the rape cases uh, charged against him right now. From that allegation, he's free, but uh, what about his career? Well, we have a caller there who will be giving us uh, his own uh, contribution on the show. Good to have you. Hello, are you there? Yes, hello. Okay, good to have you on the show. Yes, my name is Shedin and calling from Taraba State. Where in Taraba? I will carry paper precisely. T where in Taraba, you say? We'll carry Luku Okay, we'll carry, we'll carry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Mendy case and also Super Eagles. Well, as for the Super Eagles, I think uh, the teams there are no threat to Super Eagles, uh, except for the coach, uh, Jos Pezero. I do not think his footballing technique is good enough to take us to anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think that first, for Super Eagle to succeed, the first thing to do is to fire the zero and look for maybe an indigenous coach who will take us through. Mm. And then for Benjamin Mendy, Mendy. It's, it's such a Mendy. Mm. It's such a pity such thing happened. And uh, what can he do? Just to move on from there, mm. because he does his career from where it was, and then try to pick up from there. It's mm. such a pity, such a pity, though. Such a pity. I can only feel for yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us from Wukari there. Well, it's just a pity that Benjamin Mendy had to go through this coming from our caller. And now we also talk about Super Eagles playing in Group C uh, for the World Cup qualifiers. It's a banana peel, a tough one. We need to be very, very careful, but we can't do it if we are determined. One more call. Let's have our caller there join us. Good to have you on the show. Hello, are you there? Okay, while we're waiting for one more call before we go straight to our transfer stories update, so give you update concerning transfer stories now. Uh, well, uh, uh, okay, <laughs> the last caller on the show. Good to have you. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good to have you. Good uh, Yes, you're yeah, welcome. Good morning, sir. Good to have you on the show. Your name, please. Go on. Okay. Uh, well, it seems uh, <laughs> the call actually decided to go off now. We've been talking concerning Benjamin Mendy and also the Super Eagles in Group C. A tough one, but they can make it. Hello, how are you doing? Yes, let's quickly run through some transfer story before we wrap it up. Asna completes Urian Timber, 39.38 million pounds deal from Ajax. Good one. He said he loved the club and he wants to at least uh, perform well for Asna, the Gunners. At least that's what all footballers always say. They love the club from childhood. Let's see what they, he will be contributing to that club. Uh, uh, that's Asna having Urian Timber in their squad there. Well, Chelsea are looking at making a move for Juventus striker Dusan Vlahovic, a Pochettino right now want Blahovic to join them over there in London where the bridge will not collapse necessarily it will stay on and Manchester City have made Bayern Munich's fullback Benjamin Pavard their number one target if England uh, defender Kyle Walker joins the German champion so it's going to be a swap uh, Walker coming to Bayern Pavard going to Manchester City Marcel are trying to sign Gabon striker Pierre Emerick Aubameyang from Chelsea they want to get this player uh, to come to uh, Olympic Marcel a big one for Aubameyang who really uh, needs to get his act together right now because different clubs have been uh, trying to see how they can get him away from Chelsea Bayern Munich forward Sadio Mane's representative have met with Saudi Arabian club Al Nasser uh, to discuss a move for the Senegalese international uh, is the captain of Serang Senegalese Serang Lions and now he's with Bayern but he wants to move away and it's possible that he could be joining Cristiano Ronaldo over there in Saudi Arabia Professional Football League and the last one says Manchester United reject initial offer for Turkish uh, from Turkish side Galatasaray for Fred they want to sign Fred and the amount they are dropping Manchester United are saying no to that amount they want more money for the Brazilian Fred if they want him to sign for them 
cough out more money according to uh, Manchester United. Well, those are the transfer updates we just brought to you there. And to also let you know that a lot of people calling on the show to talk about Super Eagles in Group C. We'll be facing Zimbabwe, Lesotho, Rwanda, South Africa, and Benin Republic for the qualifier uh, in the World Cup 2026. Can we do it? A lot of Nigerians actually reacted to that. And also uh, about Benjamin Mendy being given the free, uh, at least right now, you have been cleared of all the rape cases against him and the young man who just has to face his life right now. But very, very painful. Well, a lot of stories that we brought to you on the show, uh, Weekend Sport. More of this will continue to come your way on the station, or rather from the station Trust TV. Well, I'm Adeni Aji Shafet. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.